Unbelievable's first episode reminds me a lot of another crime drama miniseries on Netflix, Quicksand. It's a comparison I made in the full season review too, but the shocking manner in which the crime is slowly revealed, along with the cutaways and mystery from the word go, really mirrors the way that miniseries begun too. Beyond that though, the series gets off to a good start, albeit a slow one, as we follow the harrowing journey of Marie, from the moment of her reporting the rape through to the vilified ending where she's made out to be a liar. We begin episode 1 with a young girl named Murray Raitt, and after relaying her story on to the police officer at the scene, she's forced to tell that same story again to lead investigators who arrive at the scene of the crime. As she's taken to the hospital, things aren't much better there either as the apathetic nurse takes swabs and talks her through what she's doing. After finishing what she needs to do, she makes Murray sign some papers and sends her home. As she leaves, the lead investigator, Detective Parker, returns and makes her repeat the story again, going through all the intricate details of what happened that night. It's here we cut back and forth to the night of the incident, as we see Murray cut her binds and try to remain calm in the face of what's happened to her. Even after going through all the details with him, he puts a piece of paper in front of her and asks her to fill out the statement in writing. After returning home, Marie continues to have visions and struggles to fall asleep, while Colleen grapples with the gravity of what's happened. As she continues to press on the matter, Marie pushes back leading Colleen to worry, given her dismissive behavior toward everything. Meanwhile, Judith speaks to Detective Parker about the validity of Marie's claims, proceeding to divulge information on her tough upbringing and various different foster parents she's been staying with. Sowing the seeds of doubt early on, Parker follows this up by poking holes in Marie's statement, as well as one of her friends who assumes that, as Marie was tied up, she used her toe to dial his number. Given the lack of forced entry to her apartment and items found inside the flat, all fingers point to the incident being fabricated. Calling her in for questioning, Parker and fellow Detective Prue tell her they think she made the entire story up, and as tears flow down her face, the audio muffles out before she tells them there was no rapist. However, on the statement Murray writes that it was a dream, prompting both men to lose patience and tell her she's wasting their time. Slamming her fists on the table in frustration, she tells them that maybe she blacked out. Given the inconsistencies in her story, the police tell her that the only thing they know for sure is that she's now lied to them three times. Eventually, she tells them there wasn't a rapist, which prompts Becca back home to tell her to go back to the station and redact her last statement. Deciding to follow Becca's advice, Marie heads back and where Prude loses his patience and gives her an ultimatum take a polygraph test to prove if she's telling the truth. If she fails it however, Chef's going to jail. Deciding the risk is too great, she decides one last time not to and goes along with the story of her making everything up, much to the disgust of everyone she knows and loves back home. Running away from everything, Marie heads up to a bridge in the middle of the night and looks out. If there's one thing Unbelievable manages to capture early on, it's the apathetic way the police handle this case from the get-go. It's rage-inducing stuff too, and given Marie's obvious state of shock throughout the episode, it's actually pretty alarming that no one appears to have picked up on this. Still, the episode does well here to keep things engaging and interesting, especially given the solitary narrative woven through this episode. With the door left wide open from here, Unbelievable gets off to a pretty good start. Episode 2 of Unbelievable begins with Detective Parker formally closing Marie's case and waving away any compensation she may have been liable for. Despite clearly suffering from mental health issues, for now the only thing Parker cares about is the amount of energy the police have spent on this. We then cut to Colorado in 2011, where we reintroduced a female detective Karen. Along with her colleague, she's called to the scene of a sexual assault with the victim a 22-year-old girl called Amber. As Karen interviews the girl and asks what happened, some of the details are similar to that of Marie's story three years prior. Of course, this information is unknown to Karen, but for now, Amber agrees to have a DNA swab on her face before showing the detective around her house. As she relays the details of what happened that night, it turns out he put a blanket over her and told her she needs to take care of herself after the act. As he left the house, Amber also discloses that he told her it was his first rape, which she doesn't believe is true. 
Unable to go back to her own house, Amber stays with friends instead, while Karen learns that three suspicious males are being investigated in connection to this case. As she deliberates over the details of Amber's file, we see another montage segment, this time relaying Amber's detailed account of that night, interspersed with images of what took place in her room. It's here we momentarily cut back in time to see Marie having a tough time of it at school, as she's enforced with a strict curfew and punished for lying about the rape incident. The episode itself then ends with Karen returning home from a hard day's work, relaying the details of her case on to her husband, who asks about the backpack and suggests following that up as a lead. In the dead of the night, Detective Grace is in the midst of investigating an eerily similar case to that of Karen, and she finds someone wearing a backpack traipsing through the woods nearby. She holds him up at gunpoint and proceeds to ask who he is. With another slow episode, the dual narrative begin to take shape, culminating in an ending that introduces Detective Grace, our trio of female protagonists will inevitably share the limelight from here on out. Aside from a few details, there isn't a whole lot to write home about, and in many ways, the episode acts as an introduction to both Karen and Grace, whilst fleshing out more of the case. With plenty to digest, all roads lead to the same destination, but for now, Unbelievable continues to deliver an engrossing and absorbing crime drama with its latest episode. Episode 3 of Unbelievable begins with the man out in the woods admitting he was moving rocks to reduce the possibility of bacterial infection. On April 22, he was at a conference and this proves to be a stable alibi, meaning he's not the man Grace has been looking for. As he leaves, Karen catches up with Grace, and it turns out she has a similar case to that of our hardened police investigator. It turns out the woman in Grace's case had only just moved in too, and on top of that, there's also items missing from drawers in Grace's rape case. Having heard enough, the two investigators decide to join forces for now as the cases are pretty similar. Back in 2008, a frazzle Marie is approached by Judith who offers her a lift home. Unfortunately her phone constantly rings with people shouting profanities and abuse at her. With Judith not helping matters, Marie snatches her bike out the boot and rides away, eventually comforted by Connor who comes and sits with her by the beach, before driving her home. After checking in with the guard on duty, thanks to her curfew, Marie receives a letter from the police which happens to be a criminal citation, a police charge for false reporting. Unhappy with her team's apathy toward the case, back in 2011 Karen grills some of her associates before checking the CCTV for clues. There, she finds a Mazda with a broken mirror, and as she continues to look, they also find a few minuscule skin cells on the foreign material from Amber's room. As she heads over to Grace's to see if she can help, they question whether that could be a clue or not. Given the distinct cleanliness and thorough nature over not leaving any clues, Karen happens upon a very worrying and real possibility, they could be dealing with a serial rapist police officer. She goes on to suggest asking the police districts for help, which Grace vehemently rejects thanks to the possible consequences of doing this. As she heads back home and begins searching through the police database, she tells Grace that the officer could be moving around precincts and draws up a list of rape cases from the last five years. After searching through the various different names and numbers, Grace finds two other case matches which back up their theory that a police officer is the one committing these acts. With fire in her eyes, Grace tells Karen she's going to get the FBI and CBI involved and merge their investigations. Game on. The third episode of Unbelievable really begins to set the wheels into motion for the series ahead. The organic way both these investigations merge is pretty impressive, and the subtle changes in pacing really begin to see Unbelievable become much more engaging and exciting. The realistic depiction of police work is a nice touch too, and the big reveal about a possibility being a police officer is certainly an interesting twist, one I didn't see coming at all. Quite what will happen from here remains to be seen, but for now Unbelievable does well to keep things exciting and unpredictable. Episode 4 of Unbelievable begins with Grace and Karen interviewing one of the victims, hearing that their story is pretty similar to the other two cases they have, right down to the details about being gentle and the cleanliness. As they head back to the FBI headquarters with this newfound information, they ask Agent Taggart for help. 
after dancing around their hunch, Taggart instead comes up with his own idea that the crimes are escalating and becoming more violent over time. Whoever is doing this clearly needs a bigger adrenaline hit after every rape. Meanwhile in 2008, Marie finds out there's actually an arrest warrant out for her, and she's due to go to court for a preliminary hearing that afternoon. Unfortunately, she doesn't have a lawyer, but thankfully a last-minute stroke of luck sees a public defendant take on her case. She tells the judge she's not guilty, leading to a later court date being set. After questioning what's happening to her, Marie is told that he'll try and work out a plea deal with the district attorney. As she heads home, she hears a similar suspect on the news reporting about an assault, prompting Colleen to plead with Marie to go back to the police and explain that it's not an isolated incident, which she refuses to do. In 2011, the detectives attempt to narrow down their search perimeters until they're approached by a college student who gives up the name of Scott Parrish, who may have been the one responsible. After hearing that he was arrested previously for something similar and his charges then were dismissed, Karen check his photos on Facebook and finds he may have a birthmark on his leg, matching the description given by Amber. Karen brings him in for questioning, and as she grills him over the dates of the rapes, it turns out he has an alibi for the 22nd April as he was with his parents. From here, she changes the questioning to ask about a birthmark on his leg, she takes a photo of it and sends him on his way, crossing him off the list of possible suspects thanks to his alibi. On her way home, Karen says goodnight to her husband before noticing a white Mazda truck passing her on the road. Quickly putting her sirens on, she approaches the window with her gun and tells them to put their hands on the steering wheel. As it happens, it's simply a man and his son driving home. As she gets back in her car again, she realizes the toll this case is having and sits in silence. As things begin to get more serious and we cross the halfway point of this series, the episode does well to show the mental pressures a case like this can have over our detective's mental state. Both Grace and Karen have issues this episode because of it, and the latter really comes to a head late on with the car incident. It's a nice touch and something that certainly adds more character to the show. For now though, Unbelievable leaves things wide open as answers appear a long way off. Episode 5 of Unbelievable sees Grace and Karen continue to investigate one of the victims, who believes that her attacker may have been a police officer. Given the way he raised his flashlight at the door, it's consistent with the way her attacker raised his knife on the day of the attack, and it may just hold some credibility against Grace and Karen's theory. At Lily Darrow's house they pull up a print, and it matches that found at the other suspect's floor. They may not know who it is but one thing's for sure they're getting closer to finding out. Back in 2008, Maria's moved to work in the loading bay, thanks to her picture being shared everywhere. As she heads down to work in the darkness, Colleen approaches Judith with what she's found, and shows her the news report on TV about another rape victim. It's here she learns about the court date, and that the police are charging her with creating a false report. Deciding to take matters into her own hands, Colleen makes a move that may prove to bring more attention to Marie than she may have wished. However, in the loading bay she's antagonized by her fellow worker who suddenly changes his demeanor and tells her it was all just a joke. Not a very funny one at that either, as it rattles Marie enough to freak her out and storm out of work. After pushing Connor away and fighting outside, he leaves which prompts her boss to come and speak to her, eventually resulting in Marie quitting and hiding out in her room. Back in 2011, Elias asks whether to separate out files that suspect police, prompting Taggart asks whether it's an angle that has merit. Cornered, Grace has no choice but to admit the truth that each rape was in a different district and may have been committed by one of their own thanks in part to the pristine crime scenes and mounting evidence. In the middle of their heated debate, Mia arrives with good news she's found the same boots and gloves that match that of the attacker. Eventually, this leads them on to Marie's case where they find her file back in 2008 that matches what they've all been pursuing. While Karen heads off to Kansas, the rest of the group make fun of Elias's idea about women's underwear, before having an idea with stalking being thrown around, perhaps someone saw something from a passing vehicle. As the team get to work, Karen finds a book about rape forensics, and begins reading in Kansas, while eyeing up a suspicious man at the bar, who creepily watches a group of girls. 
Flashing her badge in a not-so-subtle way, she passes him slowly on the way out, while Grace concocts a story to get her fellow policemen's phone numbers, leading her closer to the truth. As the pieces of the puzzle begin to slot into place, all the clues appear to point to a policeman as the one who's behind the rape cases. Just who that may be remains to be seen, but I'd imagine it'll have something pretty profound to do with 2008, given that appears to be the catalyst for where everything began. With more investigative work and the police theory finally out in the open, Grace's play for the phone numbers at the end may just be the catalyst needed to push our characters into the final home stretch of this investigation. Episode 6 of Unbelievable begins with Karen arriving back from Kansas and telling Grace she hasn't had much luck. Lily shows up at the station soon after and shows them a knife that was left at the crime scene. After convincing her that the police are working hard on the case, the girls wonder whether they're going to solve this or not, given the lack of substantial evidence they have to go on. Back in 2008, Maria's offered a deal involving therapy, $500 and no drugs and alcohol. Still shocked from the entire incident, she approaches Judith and asks for the money, which she refuses to do until she gets some answers. Midway through taking her driving lessons, Marie spies someone with a blue rucksack that sparks flashbacks to the night of the incident, prompting her to race through a red light. As she heads back home after the lesson, she winds up smoking and drinking with a random group at the shop, a way to forget the shock of what happened to her. Unfortunately she misses her curfew and as such, she gets booted out of her accommodation and is forced back into living with Judith. Marie has her day in court and struggling to hold back tears, pleads guilty to the charge of filing a false report. Looking up domestic disturbance calls, back in 2011, Grace continues to dive deep into the investigation, helped by her partner who manages to snatch up some police files on James Massey. Looking deeper into this, it turns out he was around the area during the time of the rape. Sensing the worst, Grace investigates James, only he seems to have caught wind of what's happening, and as she goes to see him, he spits in her face and tells her not to mess with them. On a mission, Grace returns to the station where Karen updates Taggart on what's happened so far. With no definitive clues, Grace begins to despair that they'll never find the suspect. After the briefing, Elias updates the team on the truck and has a registration for the Mazda and the owner's name Christopher McCarthy. It's a solid lead too and as Grace and Karen stake out the house, after some time they see him leave and get in a car. Karen turns around and follows them down the road where they enter a diner, prompting Karen to head in too. Back at the house, Grace knocks on the door, hoping no one is in so they can set up cameras in the house. As the duo leave the diner, Karen seizes her opportunity and snatches up the cups for DNA, only it turns out the man in the diner isn't actually Chris, it's his brother Curtis. With a tense finish to the episode and another spanner thrown in the works, Unbelievable delivers another solid episode here, showing the exhausting and slow process of staking out houses. If there's one thing this show has really excelled at, it's showing the methodical way investigations play out, and it's easily the strongest part of the show. It's a reminder that Netflix can deliver the goods among a slew of questionable greenlit projects, and right now, Unbelievable is easily one of the strongest crime dramas this year. Episode 7 of Unbelievable begins with Karen learning they've now gone from one suspect to two. Heading back to the station, the case is blown wide open as the group scramble to piece together timelines for both brothers. For now at least, they're handling the cups as one shared piece of DNA. As they dive into the family history, all hope rests on the DNA results to get them into the house. With a timeline now drawn up for both Chris and Curtis, Karen turns her attention to a specific event that may be linked to buying a gun and items for the next assault. This leads them down a new path that sees Christopher buying a gun on April 22nd, the same date that of course coincides to the sexual assault. As they get the DNA results back, Karen prepares for the house arrest, while Grace hangs back at the station, attempting to handle the handful of other cases on her desk. On a mission and with a steely resolve, Karen arrives at the house with a squad of other officers and arrests Chris. Spying the birthmark on his left calf, she reads his rights and heads inside the house. Here she finds discs with names written on them in an office, and the pink camera mentioned by one of the suspects. 
opening up the closet, she goes on to find the rucksack and shoes. With Christopher now behind bars and a mountain of evidence against him, Karen spies an amplifier with a whole stack of women's underwear in. Elias was right he's taking the underwear as trophies. Back in 2008, Marie arrives at counseling where she refuses to engage and sits twiddling her thumbs until the time is over. However, as she talks about zombie films with Dara, the therapist tells her she believes that she didn't fabricate the story and thinks there may be an element of truth to it. Here she opens up a little and talks about the incident, telling Dara she wishes she lied earlier and figured it out on her own, without the need for the police to become involved. It's devastating and seeing everyone fail her in her life is a heartbreaking moment. In 2011, Karen and Grace enter the interview room with Curtis and ask him to show them his leg. It's clean and no birthmark. Confused, Curtis asks what he's doing there, and it's here both Grace and Karen tell him the truth about his brother. Shell-shocked, Curtis tells them he had no idea as he sits in stunned silence. As they head out the room, both women are warned about the pictures on Christopher's computer as the officer tells them he managed to crack the computer and get into the files. As they click through the various pictures, both Karen and Grace struggle to look at the graphic nature of what they're seeing before stumbling upon pictures of Marie. The episode then bows out on a heartbreaking and devastating note, as Marie tells her therapist if the truth is inconvenient and doesn't fit, they don't believe it. Out of all the episodes in this eight-part miniseries, this one is by far the most emotional. It's hard not to feel heartbroken by the ending too, and seeing Karen and Grace's reaction to these photos is testament to the acting prowess in this show. Seeing Curtis's reaction to hearing what his brother has done is another standout moment too, and accompanied by the plot reveals and devastating nature of finding all the evidence in Chris's room, really hammers home the gravity of what's happened. Unbelievable delivers one of the most emotionally charged episodes here, and Marie's speech at the end is likely to be a big talking point long after this show has finished. The penultimate episode to Unbelievable is very good indeed and easily the highlight of the series. The season finale of Unbelievable wraps up all our plot threads and sees all three protagonists round out their storylines in the most satisfying way. We begin with Grace phoning Detective Parker in relation to the rape and informing him of the serial rapist they've just captured. He gives her his email, and she sends him the pictures of Marie, after he tells her they filed a false report against the young girl. It's here the weight of what's happened hits him, especially after heading to Kansas and seeing the mountains of evidence for himself. Back home, consumed by guilt, he heads off to see Marie and attempts to apologize for what happened without actually saying sorry. He tells her if he could turn back time he could, but she bitterly tells him he can't, giving him the cold shoulder. He hands her a letter from the state and leaves, a check for $500. It almost seems like an insult given what Shes been through. As she heads home after work, she searches through her computer and finds the news about the Colorado killer. Deciding $500 isn't enough, she tracks down her public lawyer again and tells him she wants to press charges against the police. This leads him to refer her case to a man named Bruce, who seems confident he can get her more money. Meanwhile Grace and Karen learn Christopher wants to plead guilty, but also wants the kidnapping charge to be dropped. Incredulous, Grace tells his lawyer they'll agree if he gives up the password to his computer. The day of the court trial arrives, and we hear the heartbreaking stories from each of Christopher's victims. This, coupled with Grace's plea to the judge, sees the man arrested for 300 years the maximum sentence and the best possible result. Of course, this victory is tinged with bittersweet regret for the victims who will never live a normal life again. Marie hears from her lawyer that the state have made an offer of $150,000 to bury the story. He's reluctant to take it, but Marie tells him he just wants it to be over and takes the money. With everything packed up and compensation under her belt, Marie heads back to the station and tells them she never received an apology from anyone. Detective Parker then eventually apologizes to her as Prude watches from the stairs. She tells him that next time he needs to do better and leaves the station with both of them breathing a heavy sigh of regret. Christopher agrees to be interviewed by Taggart, and adding insult to injury retorts that the reasoning is because women make him uncomfortable. Self-assured and arrogant, he tells the police that he was sure the incident in Washington would get back to him. 
Unfortunately, this lapse in police aptitude lead him on to the spree he committed, which makes Karen uncomfortable as she listens to the tape with Grace. With the case now solved and their time drawing to an end, Grace tells her to cut out the soppy goodbyes after a final dinner together, and they smile at one another before going their separate ways. As Karen leaves, she receives a call from Marie Adler, who obtained her number from her lawyer. It turns out the two women looking into the rapist case is the reason she's still alive and thanks them for their perseverance and hard work. It's a touching moment, and one that's relayed onto Grace on the phone as a final aerial shot, sees our victim driving off into the great unknown, now able to start again and try to pick up the pieces of her broken life. When it comes to shows I've said it before but an ending can make or break your experience. In this case, Unbelievable absolutely delivers. With all the plot threads resolved and a satisfying conclusion brought to light, Unbelievable does an impressive job rounding out all its characters in a believable and organic manner. Grace and Karen's relationship has certainly changed over the episodes, and their natural chemistry really shines here as the two gain a mutual understanding for one another. On a side note, it's worth pointing out the symbology with Marie driving off at the end, showcasing her long road to recovery after this tragic incident, and leaving the past behind her dot visually, when you compare the cold, muted opening we received during the first episode, to this bright, vibrant and uplifting ending, the aesthetic of the show tells a narrative of its own, which is always great to see in a show like this. As the dust settles on this mini-series, Unbelievable ignites the autumn, fall, schedule with a really impressive police procedural, and one of the best mini-series this year. It's testament to this genre too, given how many options there are out there, that this show can do so well to bring such a sensitive subject to light in a respectful and hard-hitting manner. Emotional, poignant and well-written, Unbelievable ends as it began and grossing right through to the end, and bowing out Shocking, methodically paced and really well written, Unbelievable is a poignant and important reminder that sexual assault has far broader psychological effects than the despicable act itself. Split across eight episodes and shot between two timelines, Netflix's latest crime mystery series manages to juggle both stories perfectly, slowly building up tension and pace toward the climactic finale that sees this story come to an end. Inspired by real events, Unbelievable is, at its core, a rape case procedural, and it opens right at the heart of the drama. Young, distraught Marie reports a rape to the police in 2008, and after being forced to repeat her story numerous times to different officers, finds herself on the wrong end of the law, as her hazy memory and inconsistent stories leads her into a false report case that sees her facing arrest and possible jail time. Meanwhile, a separate story taking place in 2011 shows up in the second episode and runs parallel to Marie's story right through the end of the series. This sees two police detectives from different towns, Grace and Karen, teaming up to track down a serial rapist that appears to be moving between states to cover his own tracks, despite eerily similar stories between victims. As the pieces of the puzzle begin to align, this inevitably sees them both stumble back to the 2008 case that started this chain of events. In terms of pacing and narrative progression, Unbelievable achieves both effortlessly, and although some of the earlier episodes feel a little slow, especially the first and second, later on things become far more dramatic and exciting as the case comes to its conclusion. What's particularly impressive here though is the way Unbelievable tackles its subject matter. It never shies away from the big questions, and some of the police work feels realistically depicted. From trawling through CCTV footage across an entire evening through to making phone calls right through the day until night, if Unbelievable shows one thing here, it's how unbelievably hard detectives work to get to the bottom of cases like this. It's slow, methodical stuff, and when a new piece of evidence comes to light, you really feel the relief and elation these detectives feel at the little wins. It's such a cleverly constructed way of showing this line of work, and coupled with the dialogue and numerous police slang terms used, Unbelievable disguises its exposition in pretty clever ways. There's even some self-aware jabs at its own explanations thrown in for good measure. There are some really nice montage segments in here too, utilizing extreme close-ups of paperwork and crossing names off list, as well as showcasing the passage of time nicely. It really gives you a feel for this exhausting work and plays into the realistic angle unbelievable so effortlessly manages to achieve. 
little moments like making phone calls and following up on alibis are commonplace tropes in this genre, but Unbelievable's realistic slant gives these moments a weight to them that few police procedurals manage to conjure up. At the heart of it though, Unbelievable is a poignant, thought-provoking reminder of how devastating sexual assault can be. It's hard not to feel rage during the early episodes when Marie is made out to be a criminal, and despite the deliberately female slant on the case in 2011, contrasting that of the two male cops fronting Marie's case in 2008, there's never any agenda-driven writing or political point scoring here. These are simply two women who want to get to the bottom of this case no matter what. While at times the series is a little slow, especially early on, Unbelievable is worth sticking with to see the dramatic way this one closes out. With some slick camera work, nicely implemented edits and a realistic slant to proceedings, Netflix's latest police procedural is one of the better offerings on the platform, and follows in the footsteps of quicksand for its gritty, realistic depiction of crime. If you're in the mood for a gritty crime drama, Unbelievable is well worth checking out, and one of the better shows released on Netflix. And what you think what we will get in season 2? Tell your thoughts in the comments.